Hello, so today we are going to discuss lymphatic circulation. So in this diagram you can see this is the right heart, this is the left heart and from the left heart the blood is coming out from the left ventricle and then, then uh, these arteries are divided into small small capillaries. So it's going into a small capillary branch. And from here this is the venous blood, this blue is the venous blood and it is dropping into the right atrium. So as simple as that. Now let's try to understand this fact that once the blood goes out of the left ventricle, it goes in high pressure. We know that the systolic blood pressure is 120 millimeter of mercury. So this blood goes out in high pressure. And then it, these arteries are breaking down into small, small capillaries. So what happened in small capillaries here? So let's try to zoom this part. Okay, what happens here? So, so once it breaks down into small capillaries, it becomes a single layer. It becomes a single layer. It becomes a single layer. So these capillaries are becoming single layer with small pores in between. So you can imagine when the arteries are breaking down into capillaries and the capillaries are become single layer. So what will happen to the fluid here? So there is always a escaping of the fluid because of the high pressure. So there is a lot of fluid is escaping out of this fenestrated or poured endothelium. Okay, because of the high pressure. So as a result, this the, there are lots of plasma collected in the interstitial space. So there is plenty plasma collected in the interstitial space. Okay. So so plasma is collected. So this green is so there is plenty plasma collected in interstitial space because of the high pressure coming out of this blood circulation. So you can say that there is because of pores in between there is leakage of fluid. So there is leakage of fluid and there is collection of plasma around the cells. This plasma collection of plasma around the cells. Now in the whole day in the 24 hours of the day there are around 20 liters that are escaping. 20 liters 20 liters are accumulated in the interstitial space, 20 liters. And this fluid that is leaked, they always goes back into the venous system. They goes back. They always try to go back into the venous system. So the 17 liters are going back. So 20 liters are coming out and 17 liters are going back. So what is the balance here? 3 liters are trapped here. So there are 3 liters of fluid collected extra in the interstitial space. Remember interstitial space already has lots of fluid. Now there is 3 liters of extra amount of fluid that is collected in the interstitial space. So it needs a drainage system now. Remember that thing. So along with this fluid that is leaking out, there are some small amount of proteins also that is leaking. So small amount of proteins also are leaking. Not the big protein molecule, but small amount of protein molecules are also leaking into the interstitial space through this space. Now you can imagine that proteins are responsible for oncotic pressure. Proteins always have a capacity to retain fluid. So what will happen if the protein content is increasing by time? So what will happen here? It will retain the fluid. So if it is start retaining the fluid in the interstitial space, there will be a chance of developing edema. So there is a chance of developing edema. So what will happen if there is edema? There are so many things that can happen if there is edema in the interstitial tissue. So this is a daily routine that 20 liters are coming, uh, are leaking out and 17 liters are going back into the venous flow, but 3 liters are remained here. So to avoid that, our body has a circulation system called lymphatic circulation. So we have some drainage pipe here. We have some drainage pipe which are closed ends. Remember, these are not open ends, they are closed. We have some drainage system here. So we have a drainage system here. These are lymphatic capillaries. Now, if I zoom these lymphatic capillaries, if I simply zoom these lymphatic capillaries, the lymphatic capillaries, the wall, they are overlapping. The walls are overlapping. Okay, the walls are overlapping. The endothelial cells bounding the the 
the endothelial cells that is lining the lymphatic they are overlapping each other means what is overlapping the one endothelial one cell is overlapping each other so now there is collection of interstitial fluid here so because of the interstitial fluid this high amount of interstitial fluid that is extra amount of interstitial fluid it will give pressure to this pressure to this like a mini valve system so it will give a pressure to this like a mini valve system and then it will fluid will come inside so as a result because of that micro we can say mini valve system or micro valve system so because of that limb can escape inside but it will not go back it will not going outside so limb will escape inside so as a result here so limb sorry not limb this fluid will escape the fluid will escape into the closed tubes okay in the closed tubes of the lymphatic capillary so this capillary is called lymphatic circulation they are part of a lymphatic circulation so what they do they are then they join they drain into one and then it is collecting the all the interstitial fluid so that 3 liter of interstitial fluid which is finding a way to go out so this lymphatic capillaries they will collect this fluid inside okay so the fluid will move inside so this fluid will moving inside so this fluid is now this lymphatic capillaries are going to become big and they are called lymphatic vessels all right so in this lymphatic vessels now they just can't go and drop dump in the right side of the heart so there is also a checking mechanism there is also you can see there is a filter kind of me mechanism like your uh, wash basin there is a filter kind of thing so here there is a filter kind of thing that is checking what is coming in to this thing so this is called lymph node so there are plenty lymph node which is collecting the this fluid so this fluid is called lymph this fluid that is collected into the lymphatic capillaries is called lymph so they are collecting this lymph and this lymph is moving in the upward direction towards the right side of the heart in the midway there are always lymph nodes so first thing you have to note here that first function of this lymphatic system is the drainage so number one function is here is it the drainage system so number one function of the lymphatic circulation is drainage it drains the extra amount of fluid to this tubes which are called lymphatic capillaries because the capillary endothelium is overlap so the fluids can move in but it's not going back to the circulation so rest of the 17 liters they are always being reabsorbed and they go into the right side of the heart they join the venous blood so what about this extra 3 liters that are moving here so now they are always checked by lymphat these lymph nodes so let's try to understand what a lymph node is so if we zoom this lymph node you can see okay so lymph node you can see these are bean shaped they are bean shaped so and they have okay i draw this thing so they are bean shaped and which have efferent vessels and there is one efferent vessels so this this lymphatic vessels so this lymphatic vessels where they go they go into the efferent they go go as efferent vessels and drain into the and dump into the lymph nodes so in the lymph nodes there is a huge collection of lymphocytes here huge collection of lymphocytes in the center these are all lymphocytes okay they are all lymphocytes there is lots of collection of lymphocytes in the lymph node in the center so you can see this lymph so this lymph which is coming from this 
tissues in the interstitial space, they are all going to the lymph node from plenty efferent vessels. There are so many efferent vessels coming from different directions. And this lymph is being dumped here. The lymph is being dumped here. So these are all efferent. Efferent. So lymph is being dumped here and as it goes toward the center, these lymph are then, they were met by lymphocytes here. They are met by lymphocytes and also plenty macrophages here. Macrophages. Because there is always a chance of there is that always a chance that tissue has got some infections. There is so when so there is a chance of tissue getting infections. So if there is an infection here, these bacteria they will also move along with this fluid. So the bacteria also move along with the fluid. So there are plenty bacteria. So these bacteria are being trapped here. These bacteria are not allowed to join the venous blood or not allowed to go into the circulatory system by the lymph node. So the lymph node here, it checks this incoming lymph coming from these tissue spaces. So what will happen? These macrophages, then there is these macrophages, they will, they will do the phagocytosis of this bacteria. So these macrophages, will do the phagocytosis of this incoming bacteria. Plus these lymphocytes, they also present as antigen presenting cells. So they are here in the lymph node, these lymphocytes also do some antigen presenting cells. They present these bacteria as antigens which will stimulate, which will stimulate the plasma cells, which will stimulate these plasma cells then modified into B cells and then it will produce antibodies. It will produce antibodies. So, in a nutshell, overall, this lymph node is protecting our body from incoming bacteria or antigens. So, there is a, it's a part of our immune system also. So, number two function is immunity. It gives, it's a part of our immune system. It protects any sort of infections which can go here. Apart from bacteria, remember, there is all always a chance if there is a cancer going on then this metastatic cells also they can go through this lymphatic vessels and can be checked here so it holds the metastatic cells it stops the metastatic cells from going to the blood circulation and spreading elsewhere in the body that's why when there is a, any sort of uh, surgical treatment is done in the treatment for cancer the lymph nodes are very necessary that they should be also removed because they can be a hub of those uh, metastatic cells so they always they also inhibit this metastatic cells and here lots of macrophages are there and lymphocytes are there so whatever be the cause whether this is caused because of bacteria or their metastatic cells are there then what will happen in this overall lymph node because of collection of so many B cells, lymphocytes, then metastatic cells or any sort of infection, overall this lymph node might get increase in size, what we call as lymph adenopathy. Lymph adenopathy can occur if it increase in size. So these are all, all efferent vessels. So this lymph coming from different areas, they dump here and they spend some time here. And then they go out as, as a efferent vessel. Then they go out as efferent. Now this is the efferent outlet and it is then dumped in the where it dumps, it dumps into the junction of it dumps into the junction of internal jugular vein and subclavian vein. It so So this is internal jugular vein, subclavian vein and it will, so this F efferent vessel it will dump into the junction, into the junction of internal jugular vein and subclavian vein and going to the right atrium. So it joins the right blood that is coming into the right atrium, so superior vena cava. So this is the lymphatic system overall.
okay so it do the drainage it do the immune function through this metastatic cells and also it do the filtration yes and what else then it has a different function in intestine also in intestine it carries fat cells it carries the cholesterol okay transport of cholesterol so this is an overall of lymphatic system now there is a different mechanism in intestines so overall lymphatic system is like this that blood coming out of the left side it breaks down when the, it goes to the capillaries the fluid leaks outside so this is where it saves this collection of interstitial water this is where it is preventing the development of edema so there is always a chance that if there is any lymphatic blockage here if the lymphatic are blocked this lymphatic capillaries are blocked what will happen this interstitial fluid will be collected more and more and it can develop into lymphoedema that is quite common in filariasis when this lymphatic drainage is blocked so this is the nutshell this is a summary of the lymphatic circulation